Hi everybody, I am Lauren Elkin. I'm a knitwear designer and I am going to be leading you on a knit along for my sweater Pacificus DK. So the only awkward thing about this is I don't actually have the sample anymore for the Pacificus DK. So what is next to me is the fingering weight version of Pacificus. So it's worked at a slightly different gauge and with a much lighter weight yarn. The DK weight version of Pacificus is in Colorado at the Blueprint offices and they're all on lockdown and working from home. So they can't get the sweater to me so I could have it here to film this for you. So now that we're over that little awkward bit, I want to tell you about the knit along and what we're going to be doing and then go over Pacificus DK with you and get you ready for our cast on in the middle of April. Our cast on is April 17th to be exact. Are you ready? I am. I've been preparing for this all morning. So first up, there's five phases to the Pacificus DK knit along. This is phase one. And in phase one, what we were, are doing is talking about yarns that you can use for a Pacificus DK. We're talking about what size you're gonna wanna knit so you know how much yarn to buy. And then we're gonna talk about working a gauge swatch and all the tips and tricks you need to know for working a gauge swatch successfully. So that's phase one. I give you almost two weeks for phase one to give everybody enough time to find yarn if they don't already have it, finish up some other projects if you've got some things on the needles that you're kind of in deep with because it's a little easier if you don't have too much going on at the same time when you're working it along like this. And um, three, to give me a little time to shoot the other videos for the knit along. So we're all, it's a win, win, win on this one. So phase one, I'm gonna grab my piece of paper so I'm not like constantly turning my head to the side. Um, I'm shooting these at home, so they're a little rough, but I hope you enjoy them. Um, phase one comes out today. Phase two is April 17th. And um, in phase two, what we're gonna be doing is understanding the construction more in depth. I'll go through an overview with you today. We'll be learning how to work the Pacificus lace stitch, which is one of my favorite Shetland lace stitches. Um, we'll be casting on the sleeve, working the sleeve and doing this, um, the cast ons for the side seams. And then you'll be working the right shoulder. So that's everything that you'll do in phase two. Phase three comes out April 24th, a week later, and that's gonna be a split for the neckline and working the front and back necklines. Phase four comes out May 1st, and that's the left shoulder and sleeve. And phase five comes out May 8th, and that's gonna be the side panels and finishing. Your finished sweaters should be completed for the final prize by May 31st. Now how this works is if you get totally into knitting the sweater and you feel confident that you can go on with each step, you'll have the whole pattern all at once. So you can choose to just cast on and start going through. But if you want to slow down and have tips and tricks along the way and kind of have like a goal oriented knit, then you can go with the phases and I'll be releasing a video every week that there's a phase that helps you with those steps that we're going over. In my Ravelry group, there is a tips and tricks thread, and that is where I'll put all the information you need to know as it comes out for knitting the sweater. And then there's also a thread for each phase, which is the great place to ask questions for the phase that we're working on there. What happens when you finish that phase is if you post a photo of your sweater up to the point, and I explain it in each phase what that point is, you post a photo, you tag your, your project correctly on Ravelry, and I give you information on how to do that, then you get entered to win a prize for that week. And what I've decided to do for prizes is I have a lot of friends locally that are crafters and makers that are really struggling right now. So I'm buying something from each one of them each week for you guys as your prize. So that's my way of supporting my local people that I know are having a really challenging time right now and making sure that you guys get some really beautiful prizes. 
I'm a firm believer in buying prizes and kind of like keeping the whole economic cycle going. Um, and I really try to think about things that I think you'll enjoy. So there's some good motivation to be finishing each phase and posting your picture and going. And if you follow along with this, you will have a finished sweater for summer by definitely by the end of May, if not sooner. So I urge you to stick with the phases, go along with it. You will get this sweater done, okay? So that's an overview of the phases and prizes. And now what I want to do is tell you what Pacificus DK is, and then we'll talk about yarn, and then we'll talk about size, and then we'll talk about gauge. And then I'll remind you guys of a few things again. Okay, so this is Pacificus. It's not the DK weight version. So the DK weight version, I have my swatch right here I did for the original. You can see that the yarn is a little bit chunkier. It's a DK weight instead of a fingering weight yarn, but the construction is the same. So the way Pacificus is worked is you cast on for the right sleeve and you work the sleeve fat flat and then you'll do a provisional cast on for the front and back of the sweater and you're working side to side. So you're working across the sweater. Pacificus DK is a seamless side to side sweater. I forgot to say that. So you're working across the sweater. When you get to the neckline, you will split for the neckline and you'll work the front and the back separately. And then you'll rejoin again for the left neckline and you'll work across and then work the left sleeve and then bind off. And then you end up with this long flat piece and next phase I'm going to show you all of those steps so you can kind of get an idea. I'm going to knit up little minis so you can see what it looks like. Then you've got these um, side panels here and these side panels are worked back and forth and what you're doing is basically binding off a stitch from the front and binding off a stitch from the back as you work them. This is a technique I've used a lot over the years and I do have some blog posts on how it works if you want to read those before we get to this in the next phase. It's a really fun knit. It's, it's intriguing the way that it comes together. There is a tad bit of faith as you're knitting it that it will work. And I promise you that the instructions are test knitted many times and tech edited and copy edited. And we do our best to give you a pattern that is error free so that you can, you know, feel like you have faith in what's happening in the pattern, especially since it might be a technique that you're not used to using. Okay. So that is the construction in a nutshell. Side to side, side sweater that is seamless. Um, so yarn. The yarn that I use, I was like, what are we talking about next? Yarn. <laughs> the yarn that I used for Pacificus DK was Cloudborn Pima Cotton DK. Um, I know a lot of you got kits from Blueprint before they had to close their warehouses for shipping. They are supposed to be opening up at some point, and I'll let you know when that happens. But there are also a lot of other yarns out there that will work great for this pattern that you may be able to find locally or online. So I'm going to give you an idea of those. One of those, if you really like the cotton that I used and you didn't get it from Blueprint before they shut down, Cascade has a Pima cotton that is, um, sorry, I, Cascade does have one, but the one I was thinking of is from Barocco. And um, Barocco has a cotton. I will list that there. I am forgetting the name. So I'm going to pause you and I'm going to go get it and I'm going to come right back. Okay, so... Barocco has Pima 100, which is a DK weight cotton, which will work beautifully for Pacificus DK. And an idea I had was if you have a local yarn store near you that is doing curbside delivery or pickup, you can call them and be like, hey, do you guys have this in stock? What colors do you have? You might be able to arrange for them to pop it in the mail for you or just swing by and they can put it in your car. There's ways to support your local yarn stores if they're going in every so often or checking their messages. I'm sure you can also find this online. So this would be like an exact replica pretty much of that blueprint, cloudborn cotton if that's what you want to use. Um, I did swatch some other yarns to see how they worked and one yarn that did beautifully, but it's sport weight. So there's a little bit more air between the stitches than um, the cotton yarn had. This is Anzula Vera. 
and it's not as easy to find Anzula Vera. I believe that Four Pearls in Florida, which is doing shipping, has a pretty good stock of Vera. Vera is a silk and linen blend. It makes a stunning, absolutely stunning summer weight fabric. It's definitely, I wish you guys could feel these because I think if you could feel them, you'd see what I, um, I'm talking about. It's a lighter weight because of the sport weight. So you can almost see that there's more air as I come in here on the Vera than there is on um, the cotton. So if you use the Vera, you might end up wanting to wear some kind of tank top or something underneath it. It might feel a little sheer. And I just wanted to bring that up. I'm really drawn if I do one with you guys, which I haven't quite decided if I have time to do that yet. Um, I would go for the Vera for mine, just because I know it's a lighter weight and I get hot in the summer. I, I warm up quick. Other yarns that I swatched that I got gauge with is um, Daisy I was able to get gauge with, and I'm gonna talk about how to work gauge later. Daisy is from Knit One Crochet too. It's 38 linen, 32 silk, and 30% and hemp. Um, this was a little interesting to gauge swatch because it's quite hard on the skein. The fabric that it made is super soft and yummy. I absolutely love it. Um, but after I um, wetted this, I actually threw it in the dryer and then I hung it sideways, but we'll talk about that later. So the handling of this is a little bit different. Another yarn I was able to get gauge with that I really like and is also lightweight is Kelborn Woolen's Mojave. So that's another choice. And this you might be able to find at a local yarn store that's shipping or be able to pick it up from them if you call your local one and they're answering their phone or checking messages or what have you. So that's a few other choices. I also think that Cascade has a cotton yarn that might work as well. I think Cascade has a DK weight yarn. So there are choices out there. Um, if you have a yarn that I haven't mentioned, go look at what the testers used. So another one was, um, someone used Juniper Moon. I am gonna blank on the name. It is a linen silk. It's a beautiful yarn, but I know it was quite splitty. So it was a little more challenging to knit with because it was really easy to split the plies. Sometimes if you have a yarn like that, it can help to have a duller tip needle, but then working the lace is easier to do with a sharper tip. So that's like a double-edged sword right there. Um, so you could look at other yarns that testers have used. If you have a yarn in your stash that you're wondering if it will work, if you ask me it'll, if it'll work, the first thing I'm gonna tell you is that you should probably do a gauge swatch and see if you can get gauge and if you like the fabric. And I am gonna go over gauge in detail in a second. But first, I wanna talk about size. And I didn't grab a measuring tape, which is really important. So let's see if I can grab one and not pause. Nope, I'm gonna to have to pause. Nope, I don't have to pause. You guys are really patient with me. I might have to edit that out, I'll decide. Measuring tape. We have to decide what size to make, right? In the pattern, you will see on page two, a very detailed schematic. Basically, when I am writing a pattern, I have a spreadsheet with a ton of math in it that is helping me understand all the different measurements of like necklines and shoulders and sleeves. And I'm able to auto populate based on formulas, but it means that I have all of the measurements for the schematic of the pattern and I try to give them all to you because why would I make you guess, right? So the first thing you wanna do is take your full bust measurement. This is your upper bust above your bust. This is your lower bust, you guys guessed it, below your bust, and your full bust is basically right over your nipple point. I said nipple. So you're gonna take the measuring tape, you're gonna get it up in the back. It is a little bit easier to have somebody else measure you than for you to measure yourself. And then you're gonna make sure that you're coming right over your full bust. And I'm a 34, which I knew about myself. So knowing that I have got a 34 full bust, I'm gonna go over to the schematic and I'm the perfect person to talk to you guys about this because I am in between a size two and a size three. 
So a size two is a 32 inch full bust and a size three is a 36 inch full bust. Since I'm a 34, what I'm gonna do is ask myself if I like to have a sweater that is a little bit looser or a little bit tighter. Pacificus is designed with four inches of ease. So that means the finished measurements on the two is a 36 and the finished measurements on the three is a 40. So if I knit the size three and I've got 30 and I'm 34 inches here, that means I'm going to have six inches of ease, which is quite bigger. But if I knit the size two, I'm going to have two inches of ease. I know that for my body, I like things a little bit more fitted on the top. So for me, I would choose to knit a size two. But that's a question you have to ask yourself if you're in between a size, do I like things a little looser or do I like things a little more fitted? One thing to keep in mind is what's going to be fitted is your girls are going to show up a little more or a little less. And that's a decision to make, right? And, and that's a really personal one. Like we're all have different um, levels of how we like our sweaters to hang on us. Sometimes it helps me to go look at a sweater in my closet or that I've already knit that I know I like the fit of and look at what the bust circumference of that sweater is and it'll help you kind of gauge what fit you like on your body if you're not sure what you like. So once you've decided on your size, then you know how much yardage you need and you can go ahead and order yarn. Does that make sense to everybody? In the phase one thread, if you have any questions about any of this, just ask and I'll help you. Like if you're in between sizes, just tell me what your full bust size is and I'll help you decide what size would make sense for you. I'm so happy to do that with you. And the more people that ask, the more that'll help other people that aren't asking. So that's the point of a knit along is that we're all supporting each other in knitting something together and making those decisions. Um, next up, is knitting your gauge swatch. And I gave myself a little cheat sheet over here so I could remember. The gauge in Pacificus DK is 17 stitches by 26 rows, which might sound like a tiny bit weird of a weird gauge, but I'm gonna explain to you why in a second. So the first thing that you'll do is take the yarn that you're thinking about using and you'll cast on if it's 17 stitches, I would cast on six more stitches. So cast on 23 or 24 more stitches, 20, 23 or 24 stitches total. And then go ahead and knit on those in stockinette stitch for at least six inches. Maybe, you know, four inches is okay. If you wanna do a really substantial gauge swatch that will give you an idea about the behavior of the fabric for your sweater, six inches is ideal to knit. So you're gonna knit that and then bind it off. And then what you do with your gauge swatch is you treat it just like you're going to treat the fabric of your final sweater. So if you want your gauge swatch to behave like your final sweater, you need to treat it the same way. If you're gonna block your sweater by putting it in some warm water with some wool wash and letting it soak for a while and then wringing it out and squeezing out all the extra um, liquid out of it and then laying it out flat to dry, that's what you're gonna do with your gauge swatch. So I treat them exactly the same way. I gave you step-by-step -step instructions in the tips and tricks thread on how to work a gauge swatch. The only thing that's different is when you're done with your swatch and you've blocked it, and I've done it with all of these swatches here I was just showing you. These are not six inches because I'm lazy and I was just trying to get a little something going. See, don't do like me, do like my instructions. Um, after you've blocked it and it's either dry or almost dry, you wanna take it and you wanna hang it sideways. I like to hang it, I pin it to the edge of my ironing board and I give you guys a photo in the tips and tricks thread. Maybe I'll flash it up here too so you can see it. I pin it to the edge of the ironing board and I put weights on the bottom. So I take little clips and I put them onto the bottom all the way across, like three or four or five clips, or they are all falling. And what those clips do is simulate the weight of the sweater hanging from your shoulder and they pull out the stitch gauge. So they change the ratio of the stitch gauge and the row gauge. They make the row gauge tighter and they make the stitch gauge 
looser. And that's why the gauge seems a little different to some of you than you've typically run into in a sweater. For a side to side sweater, this step is really important to simulate that weight so that the bust fits correctly and the length fits correctly. Um, one thing I like to tell people, so what's happening is the stitch gauge is determining the length and the row gauge is determining the width. So it's really important that you get row gauge when you're working your gauge swatches. We can adjust for stitch gauge a little bit, but it's much, much harder to adjust if your row gauge is off. So it's pretty important that you get row gauge. When this is hung for maybe 12 hours or 24 hours with the weight on it, then take the weight off and like bat it around like a kitten. So all of the stitches kind of line back up together and get comfortable so they're not like too elongated and then lay it down and measure it with a ruler or a gauge swatch ruler and look at your stitches and look at your rows and remember that rows are more important than stitches. If you're not sure if you've gotten gauge, if you post in the Ravelry thread, in that phase one thread, with a picture of your swatch with a ruler on it and ask if somebody can look at that and help you, I'm totally happy to do it. It's really helpful if you make sure I can measure row gauge and measure stitch gauge. Sometimes just having somebody double check for you is, is helpful and, and I'm happy to do that as part of doing this knit along trying to think about what else I want to tell you. That was a lot crammed in there about gauge and yarn and choosing a size. Um, I explained to you at the beginning how to play along with this knit along. Basically, you post photos in the phases. You tag your photos with that phase tag that I give you in the first post, post of the phase, and I always put them up at the top of the phase. Then um, you'll be eligible to win a prize and you are ready for the next phase. Since you know what all the phases are, you can go ahead and keep knitting. Just take pictures along the way. So when each phase posts, you can post your photo and tag your project and then be eligible for the prizes. Even if you've gone faster, you can still be playing along and be eligible. So go ahead and do that for sure. Um, I know I have something else to tell you that's small, but oh, here's the final thing. If you bought a kit from Blueprint, you got a pattern from, from Blueprint. That pattern is perfectly fine. It does not have any technical issues in it. The math is correct as all as I know, but the pattern that's up on Ravelry is like a live pattern. I can update those much more easily than I can update the Blueprint patterns. So as we maybe shift language to make something um, a little bit more accessible or easy, or I add an asset that will help the pattern flow better, I will be posting those in um, the phase threads. But if you purchase the pattern on Ravelry, you're certainly helping me out by getting the pattern there, but you'll also get updates every week as the pattern releases. Doing knit alongs like this are, are super fun, but they're a ton of work. So when patterns are, are purchased like as part of a kit through Blueprint, um, I do see a portion of that, but not the same amount as if you're buying it on Ravelry for me. So think about that as a way to support me and supporting you and doing the knit along, but no pressure. It's definitely not necessary. And certainly the pattern that you're getting from Blueprint is correct. It just might not have all of the assets and all of the information that the Ravelry pattern has. I think that's everything I have to cover. I'm really excited to do this with you guys. I really, I love doing these structured knit alongs and um, they're a great way to create community, knit a sweater. I don't think I'm gonna knit this with you guys because there's another sweater that is like up here that I'm very excited about. Um, so I think I'll be knitting that and designing that while you guys are doing this. So basically on Wednesdays, I have video logs that come out for you guys to watch. And then on Fridays, we have the phases for Pacificus. So there's two videos that you'll get from me a week right now, okay? I hope you all are doing well. I promise to help you stay sane in these crazy times. Thank you. This is Laura Nelkin. I'm gonna go knit a few stitches while I edit this video.